Wow, this new Star Wars Outlaws game looks pretty great. That's pretty good. You That's pretty what? good. Let's check out the official website and see if we can learn more about the good Lord. What is happening in there? Pre season pass. Get three days early access. Pre oh, order. it's about the S. Pre-order the season's pass and get three days early access. Pre-order. That's four, wow. four pre-orders on wow. one screen. Extend K's journey with two upcoming DLCs. You want to play the exclusive Jabba's fuckhouse? Pre-order. Unlock exclusive cosmetic pep. Pre-order. Are you oh fucking pre-ordering yet? You know what's funny? If you go to the Arrowhead oh Games God. website and just... Just look at it. There's yeah. something special about an Arrowhead game. Games should challenge the creativity of the individuals who play them. We want our games to help forge friendships. And look at that. Not even an advertisement for the Super Citizen Edition. Hmm. I think this is a great way to illustrate what AAA gaming has become and what indie gaming has evolved into. The difference in priorities is clear. And you might assume, Act Man, that's just typical Ubisoft greed and shenanigans. But you're wrong. It's worse than that. What Ubisoft is doing with Star Wars Outlaws is symptomatic of a much greater issue plaguing all of AAA uh, game. Recently, Ubisoft uh, sorry about dropped that. a story trailer for Outlaws. I watched it, and I felt... I don't... I don't always pre-order games. Um, I rarely really ever pre-order games, mainly because I don't have the fucking money to pre-order. Um, the only games I would pre-order our games that I actually trust in. For example, I did pre-order Horizon Zero Dawn. I did get the collector's edition with that. Sorry, guys, but I think I have to head out now. Goodbye, Lumi. Thanks for dropping by. Enjoy the rest of your day. And... El Elden Ring. Elden Ring. I would only trust from soft. I would only um, trust from soft pre-ordering. I actually, I do think I uh, pre-ordered Violet Pokemon Violet, but that's because I wanted the figures. <laughs> I wanted to pre-order Elden Ring DLC, but I don't have fun sweat. Yeah, I'm waiting for that too. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the money. <laughs> I'm waiting for the money drop to um. Pre-order the, El the Elden Ring DLC. I never pre-order any game ever. Too broken, lazy. Yeah, that 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 also that is a huge factor. Never pre-order. Waiting for discount. It depends on the game. Throw some hentai game names for me. <laughs> no. Apathy, as you know. Apathy is death. The gameplay reveal for Outlaws looked solid, but now I'm skeptical. Maybe it was the boring writing, the generic presentation, or the fact that they're directing people towards the $120 version of the oh game instead God. of the standard version. Hello, I like money. <laughs> Still, I don't remember the last time I felt indifferent to a new Star Wars game. On the flip side, one of my buddies sent me a trailer for a game called Kingmakers. I've never heard, oh, of, I heard of that franchise nor the studio behind it. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I think that's the game where McConnell went off on Esmond about it because McConnell was the original guy that liked it and Esmond isn't even gonna play it and that shit. I think that was the game. Oh my god. Oh, uh, fuck McConnell, man. Let's check it out. What the fuck is this? Oh my god! In them come on, never mind, then, never mind. The, oh, were you with shotguns? How can the engine handle this many guys on screen? This is like Mountain Blade plus Dynasty Warriors with time travel? And gr oh, grenades? Oh my god, and they have RTS mechanics? No shot, no shot. It can't get any crazy. And helicopter too? Here's the question of the day. <laughs> Wait, what? As a huge Star Wars fan, am I more excited for this and not this? Well, the answer is obvious. It's Ubisoft. Well, like I said, AAA gaming has been in decline for mm -hmm. some time. Meanwhile, indie games have become a spawning pool for creativity and imagination. You may have seen the plethora of AAA gaming is dead videos <laughs> spring up on YouTube. Well, AAA gaming didn't just die. It was <gasps> murdered. Oh my God, I need those glasses. I need them. 
If you got that reference, welcome back to 2017 YouTube. Clearly, I'm not the only one who has felt disillusioned and apathetic. Memory underscore Bar has rated the channel over five years. Check out. Welcome. Memory underscore. The adventure full of game and chaos and laughter. I raid the raid. Spread the fun and dive into the digital mayhem together. Mm, thank you, the raid, Namori. Thank you. Let's get a shout out going at Namori. I hope you had fun. What were you streaming today? What were you doing today? What's up, Raiders? What's up, Picari? What's up? What's up? What's up? We are out here watching um, why are AAA games getting worse by the act man. And that's what we're doing right now. I was trying to 112% Hollow Knight lore. Oh, we were just talking about Hollow Knight earlier. <laughs> about how I never got the good ending or the best ending or whatever. <laughs> because I couldn't do the White Palace. Demo kids, I only followed like 10 people, but I follow each raider so my list grows. <laughs> Honestly, it just gives you more streamers to check out and enjoy. Either will the Kalas not give bring you the uh, World War III clue? What? Kids are sad she hated the game and rage quit it. I, I didn't rage quit um, Hollow Knight. I was just done with the game back then. I, the White Palace was nothing I wanted to do. I couldn't, I can't play the, um, I'm bad with, uh, but I'm bad with uh, parkouring in Hollow Knight. It was murdered. If you got that reference, welcome back to 2017 YouTube. Clearly, I'm not the only one who has felt disillusioned and apathetic towards recent AAA titles. But a lot of people focus on how AAA games have gotten worse. They highlight the obvious, excessive monetization, unfinished products being released. I can't masturbate to this character. And while these are oh all God. issues worth- Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Horizon, released, Horizon mentioned. Horizon mentioned. Have you guys seen? Have you guys seen when Horizon- Let me, let me move over. Oh, fucking hell, move over, bitch. Have you guys seen how people got angry at how Alloy looks? Have you guys seen that entire discourse back then? The spray bottle isn't working correctly even though I pinned it. I'm so angry about that. Whatever. Yeah, why do they do that to the actors? She looks fine! She looks fine! They made her a chubby- I mean, that's fine! But like, there was- let me find it. Let me find it. I swear I'm gonna find it. Horizon Forbidden West Alloy with Makeup. This, this, I'm pretty sure it was this one. Oh my god, you guys see this? Holy shit! People literally said she needs to look like this, like... Like... This made me so angry as someone. I love this game. I love this game so much. I, I, it's one of my favorite games. It's one of my favorite games. Both suck, to be honest. What the fuck? Alloy is so pretty. Alloy is so pretty. She just looks like normal. She looks normal. And people can't accept that. People can't accept that she looks normal. And she looks pretty and being normal. It makes me so angry. Why? Why do her eyebrows need to be like this? Why does she need so much lipstick? Why does she need to be this? I, 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 <laughs> Dutch actress who was the face model for Ella. Ella is modeled on a real person, so I really want to know the brand of paint thinner this guy has been sniffing, so I know to steer clear of it. Look how pretty she is! <gasps> Original Ally was pretty, although the downgrade wasn't that terrible. It's not that bad, in all honesty. It's really not that bad. She do oh, oh my god, I increased my mouse speed. I wouldn't even call it a downgrade in comparison. Holy shit. Um, have you seen the Genshin Impact Ally version? I have not. No. We shall go back to our video now, though. 
because uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go off on a tantrum if if I keep talking about this. Masturbate to this. Yeah, character. I get in comparison while to the first game. I got that. While these are issues worth pointing out, we need to understand why these things are happening. The bigger picture. You see, the reality is AAA games have become far too safe, formulaic, predictable, and just unexciting. Perhaps it's because you're an old jaded nerd, Act Man. No, no, that couldn't possibly be it. Am I so out of touch? No. No. It's the children who are wrong. Exactly. We're today. <laughs> the decline of AAA gaming and the rise of indie. Why has AAA gaming gotten so bad? Now, first off, what the fuck does AAA actually mean? The Advanced Aardvark Association? Because I'd love to join that club. No, instead you should join my public Discord server, the Act Clan. <laughs> Links in the pinned comment and in the little card up here. But the acronym originally referred to large budget, high profile games developed by reputable studios released by major publishers. You know, Halo, Call of Duty, Warcraft, The Witcher, 50 Cent Bulletproof, Cory in the House. <laughs> games that would shake the very foundation of the world. AAA games typically have large teams, expensive marketing campaigns, and copious amounts of funding. The term was taken from the credit industry and applied to gaming once the severely obese corporate fat cats realized video games weren't a joke the of a business was amazing. and could actually make more money than Hollywood. For business moguls, AAA meant this is the safest investment you can make to get a return. That's not the case anymore. Today, really AAA mostly indicates the aspirations and cost of a game, not how safe an investment it is. From the 80s to the 2000s, there weren't many games that were commercial failures. It was mostly like failed consoles. And that's a good video to watch. But since the oh. 2010s, as AAA gaming budgets have grown exponentially, we've seen some big ass flops. Marvel's Avengers, Suicide Squad, Anthem, oh Redfall, Aliens, Colonial Marines. And in the last seven or so years, legit, there are barely any triple A games coming out at the moment that are good. They're just so disappointing. Gollum! Oh my god, the Gollum disaster, man. Don't get me started. The fucking Gollum disaster. Like, there's only a hand. Oh my god, the quadruple A skull and bones. Such a fucking joke, the con game. <laughs> The whole soulless corporate slop. It is, yes. It is so sad that there's only a handful of good AAA games nowadays. That is so beyond sad. I'm so happy that indie games on the rise, man. I'm so happy about that shit. It also Hi, seems yes, like Hi, many thanks popular for the franchises have released Eastside, what fans welcome. consider to be the worst entry in said franchise. Fallout 76, Battlefield 2042, Mass yep. Effect Andromeda. Oh my Maybe god. Maybe this is all just a coincidence. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. So what gives? Why have things changed? Well, one of the driving factors behind the decline of AAA games oh, is yeah, they've Hades. gotten too Fuck's big. Sake. The pants... Fuck's sake. Remind me? Remind me after the video about Hades 2, chat. Remind me after the video about Hades 2. I keep forgetting. ...do not fit anymore. For reference, Vanilla World of Warcraft was made by a team of about 40 people. Helldivers 2 was made by a team of 100. Over 9,000 people contributed to Diablo 4. What? what? Starfield, seven years in development, $200 million budget. <laughs> I can't wait for the next Skyrim release, guys. 1,700 planets to explore. Uh, Todd, you think maybe we could tone that number of planets down to like 30 or maybe 10? No. 10? 10 really the good fuck? planets? The gamers desire 1,700 <laughs> planets. AAA games have exploded in size, scope, and cost to an unprecedented level. On one hand, a larger team has the potential to create something truly incredible, revolutionary, to realize their greatest ambitions. But this relies on having a cohesive vision amongst many people and the budget and resources to make it happen. However, the more ambitious a project, the more money invested into it, the riskier it becomes. Immortals of Avium, a game you probably never heard of, no, was shouldn't. the debut title for Ascendant Studios. And for some inexplicable reason, 
the game was given a budget of 125 million smackaroos, what? making it one of the most expensive video games ever what? made. What? What the fuck? <laughs> Immortals sold poorly, and a for a debut game, how did they get those investors? Ascendant, after releasing their first title, had to lay off almost half of their staff. Wow. Six months later, the remaining employees were furloughed. A fancy word for, uh, maybe you have a job, IDK? And the <laughs> company's future is uncertain. Sometimes memes oh can my spit God, truth. I want shorter games with worse graphics made by people who are paid more to work less, and I'm not kidding. Legit, evil company, amazing game. Like, in all honesty, holy shit. Kidding. Immortals of Avium is a mistake that shouldn't have happened, and it's the exact type of reason why AAA publishers are sticking with familiar IPs and playing it safe. You guys excited for Call of Duty 26 to come out later this year? The bigger they are, the harder they fall. But why was Immortals, this random game, bloated with such a ridiculous budget and high expectations? Well, COVID-19 changed a lot of things. People bought a shitload of video games during that time. People also overhired as hell during COVID. They're really overhired as hell, so that's where all the layoffs are happening at the moment as well, which is sad. It is, but what are you gonna do? And some upper management folk adjusted their business. They saw this as an opportunity to invest, invest, invest. So they expanded operations, hired more employees, but of course, the video game sales caused by the pandemic didn't last. And we're now Boss. seeing the fallout of that overexpansion. Fallout New Vegas. 10,000 layoffs in 2023 and 8,000 more on the way. Over 30 studios were shut down. Several games canceled. Wow. The hubris from corporate overlords has uprooted this industry in such terrible ways. Overloading teams with talented employees and a shit zillion dollars isn't some magical recipe for success. In fact, it puts the studio in a much more dire, stressful. Speaking of the layoffs, that that just dropped in my head. Sorry. Like, speaking of the layoffs, the audacity Riot had, right? Riot laid off a lot of like artists and shit. Like, you know what they did after? One of uh, those artists ha has recently come forth and said, Riot contacted them to make more splash arts, but obviously, like, for way less money. The audacity! <sighs> Fucking audacity, man. Riot Sophia has a good shot about how he did social engineering and managed to save a bunch of people their jobs. Pirate Software is an amazing dude, man. I love that dude. Like, over all the layoffs of Riot, like, the layoff packages of Riot are pretty good, right? But the audacity of trying to, like, still hire the guy on freelance work of someone you fired is just... The audacity of that is so extreme. I can't. I would be so disappointed. Hi Sherlock, you coming back to say hi to chat? Position. Yeah, <laughs> the rescued ferret channel, I love it. Game doesn't sell well. Hi Sherlock. They're fucked. Blockbuster game development costs are out of control. According to a study by the CMA, a single okay, AAA okay. game could have development costs between 90 to 180 million dollars, plus 50 to 150 million for marketing. That Suicide Squad game that 200 oh people are playing? <laughs> Probably had an inflated budget. Mm, this is clearly unsustainable. Thought. It's like every- The thing is, how do they have such an inflated budget and the game looks worse than previous games made in the game, in the shame, yes, in the same universe and shit. Which one was a bat Batman Arkham City? That one? Don't remember exactly. I don't play- I don't play Batman games on that. But that is so crazy. How does it look worse? Where does the money go? Like, what do they do with the money? Do they just use it on drugs and hookers? Is that it? What happened? Arkham Knight looked way better. Yeah, that that's the one then. It's 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 crazy. It looks worse due to time constraints, I think. Maybe, maybe. But still, where does that money go? Where does that money go still? Major AAA game is some 
massive live or die gamble. Naturally, companies want to mitigate and avoid all the risk they can. So again, they rely on established IPs and stick with what's familiar and most of all, safe. So wait a minute, Actman, you're telling me triple- Why are you dissing the hookahs? They are very important of triple A development. <laughs> I didn't say I'm dissing the hookers, I'm saying, did they spend it on them, question mark? I'm asking. <laughs> Play games have become a greater risk, but also safer? That's a paradox, John. Think about it this way. The bigger the budget, the more employees working on a game, the more copies it needs to sell. Therefore, it has to appeal to a lower common denominator. They have to simplify and dumb down something. They cannot take risks or experiment. They have to stick with what has proven to work. This is a huge reason why indie games such as Helldivers 2, Hades, Lethal Company are so much better at innovating on a popular formula or giving us something brand Lethal new. Is so Which good, would man. you rather play? Back and Lethal Company is made by one guy. By one guy. Just made by one guy. A cat. For blood? Or so is Stardew Valley, right? That's also just made by one guy. It's amazing. Deep Rock Galactic. I better see some fucking rock and stone in the comments. But that's the thing. Back for Blood is a cheap imitation of what inspired it, while Deep Rock Galactic is a unique twist on the whole four dumbasses trying to accomplish something co-op game. Deep Rock is brimming with charm, style, and this is gonna sound cheesy as fuck, but you can feel the love that went into it. I can't say the same with Back for Blood. What are some other examples that illustrate how games have gotten safe? Well, let me ask you this. Did you think for one millisecond that the Modern Warfare 3 remake was going to do the no Russian scene justice? Did you think it was gonna be as shocking, if not more so? No! You terrorist. No! You look like me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ooh, wow. oh, give the writers a raise. Of course not. Like even Call of Duty feels like it's been sterilized, but of course there's some exceptions with like Cold War. I mean, that game took some serious risks with its campaign and story and it paid off. Gamers love being surprised. We love being thrown for a loop yep. because it's so hard to do now in the age yep, of the yep, internet yep. and with all these leaks and everything. This is why Helldivers 2's live service is retaining so many players because there haven't been any roadmaps going into excruciating detail about what to expect. It's, it's why the redemption well. of No Man's Sky hit so hard because Sean and Hello Games just went into hibernation and came out when they had something to show people. When I say safe, I'm not just talking about the lack of innovation with game design, but also the writing. AAA franchises that used to go really hard with the dialogue now feel tame, like they're pulling punches. I'm not a huge expert on Fallout, so Fallout fans, please correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. But there is a massive difference between Bethesda's Fallout games and the other Fallout games. In New Vegas, you can literally sell drugs to children. Like, like Wait, that's a what? real choice you, <gasps> you have can? in the game. You can what be an fuck? absolute maniac. You can shake down a guy for caps and he'll say, well, you've taken everything but the clothes off my back. And then you can say, actually, give me your fucking clothes too. You know what I mean? Yo, like, Jay-Z, what's up? For some reason, I just can't picture these types of things being in a new Fallout game. KOTOR 2 is also a fantastic example because I doubt we'll ever see a Star Wars game that takes the franchise in such a bold direction. KOTOR 2 is a Star Wars game where the main villain wants to kill the Force, destroy the Force, the like force. remove it from the universe. Wow. Destroy the concept of Sith and Jedi completely. Wow. There's no way in Nar Shadda we'd ever witness a Star Wars game that delves into that sort of thing. According to Obsidian, Chris Avalon, one of the main writers for New Vegas and KOTOR 2, Obsidian made multiple proposals to develop spin-offs for Fallout and the Elder Scrolls, all of which were turned down by Bethesda. And while we can only imagine the reason why, perhaps it was too risky in their eyes. Here's another example, Halo Wars 2. Console RTS, okay. pretty niche, but its expansion Awakening the Nightmare was the first time in a decade we saw the Flood in a Halo game. Why haven't the Flood appeared in the main series? Don't want to risk lowering the sales with oh an M rating, God. right? M rated games don't sell too great, do they? Speaking of Rockstar, <laughs> God, this industry pisses me off sometimes. LA Noir 2, where is it? Bully 2, 
And you might think, well, isn't that hypocritical, Ackman? You were just complaining about these companies sticking to established IPs. But both of these franchises only have one game. And that's kind of my point. Instead of making one, you know, $400 million game, why not cut a chunk of that out and develop multiple double A games? Like what if they took one of these $150 million triple A budgets and made a couple of $20 million bets with them, right? And just funded a bunch of projects Honestly, and the risk should. is much smaller and <laughs> i apologize so oh, wow that was a strong sneeze they should and though i think that would be uh very good for the industry and i wish triple a would take <laughs> more you, risk like you. that with smaller teams and you would get that cohesion you would get that sort of singular so vision i think and, and stronger creativity out of it I at least understand this for Rockstar because their games are so overhyped. If they released a sequel that you thought was a 9 out of 10, that would feel disappointing. A bunch of Halo spin-offs were also pitched to leadership at 343, including an ODST themed game similar to Helldivers 2. Oh. Imagine Whoa. what could have been. Damn. I guess I just don't understand why the corporate side of game development treats every title like it has to be an all-in bet. Do you see Budget. what I'm getting at? So many of our favorite franchises that we grew to love because of how bold they were are now playing Copy itself. paste. And that's why indie and double A gaming is thriving right now because they can take risks. They're not obsessing over how many people are going to buy the game. The uh, coppers want their SpongeBob, but <laughs> actually, man, <laughs> they do. I, I still don't understand how sports games can sell so much. Like, they're literally being sold the same game over and over again. There's like n no new mechanics, no nothing, just new players. Like anyone here in chat or also on the YouTube side once this got uploaded, right? Anyone here playing fucking FIFA games? I never understood FIFA games. I've tried it. I've tried it because my brother has had FIFA games. I I don't. I don't understand it. It's like why? Why? Like it doesn't even... It's not even fun! It's not even fun to play the way you play it. It's just so boring. And every single year, a new one. And just new players. Why don't you just add the same players to the new game? Oh, I know why. Because you want to make money and people are still buying it. It's just like... How do you have so little self-respect to it? <laughs> Buy the game over and over again. It's pay to win as well. It's crazy. Yeah, isn't it? Like, isn't it some sort of gacha shit where you literally gamble for uh, the players that you need to get? Like, holy shit. I remember reading some interview with AAA retired management person saying dealing with access executives it was exhausting because they didn't understand the industry and would read an article about fortnite making another billion dollars and be like why well, isn't our game more like fortnite when they're making an rpg oh my fucking god of course the executives don't understand that shit because they're all like what in their 50s 60s 70s <sighs> they never touched a fucking pc in the entire fucking day and in, in, in their entire life, sorry. <laughs> you pay for packs and it's like 0.01% to get someone good. If you pay, it's more likely. Jesus Christ, boomer shooters have made a combat. Boomer shooters? What's a boomer shooter? I'm not gonna lie, some of the, uh, of the blame Halo got for it being outdated gameplay. Part of the blame is on the fans granted the ch changes weren't really good, but it stopped them from doing something new and when all other fps moved forward halo left behind i never played a halo game i'm sorry to admit it but i never did play a halo game so i can't say helpers of power world were like well i hope this doesn't make us go bankrupt indie studios are operating at the level that AAA used to and when you don't have to make hundreds of millions of dollars to keep your company afloat and not fire your entire studio you oh can God. take risks and going back to my initial comparison between Arrowhead and Ubisoft, there's a huge difference in the mission <laughs> statements of AAA and indie games. Baldur's Gate 3 is an indie game. Oh my game. god, yes Larian it is. is an independent studio, but the Baldur's Gate 3 is an indie game. And it looks like a AAA game. 
Or like what triple A games used to be anyway, right? It is so insane. Baldur's Gate 3 is amazing. Like, just the people who haven't played Baldur's Gate 3. Go play it. Go play it now. Don't watch my video. Stop watching my video or stop watching the stream. Go play Baldur's Gate 3. That's more important than me. That's more important than what's anything that's happening on the stream right here, right now. Go play Baldur's Gate 3. The quality is so amazing, you'd assume it's AAA, right? There's this trend of indie developers reassuring customers that they're not going to nickel and dime it. They are indie. No, they were indie. And they're not that big of a studio. Larian is not that big of a studio. No, there are no in-game purchases in our game. We believe in providing a complete and immersive gaming experience without the need so for based. additional purchases. Dude, Vermin this, Tide 2 this is was so based. This statement was so based. Oh my god, I saw this. Oh my god. Cooming. Cooming over the statement. Are there any in-game purchases? No, there are no game purchases in our game. We believe in providing a complete and immersive gaming experience without the need for additional purchases. Enjoy the game to its fullest without any additional costs or microtransactions. So fucking based. Oh no, she's making cultures. <laughs> ah! What's happening? Of gaming experience without the need for additional purchases. This is so Vermin based. Tide 2 is one of the only games to do loot boxes right because they didn't sell them. At the height of the loot box craze, no less. Helldivers 2 doesn't let you pay for tiers in the freedom passes. Indie nah. developers can afford to be more player friendly because they don't have these investors hanging over their heads and these massive budgets. You might think all these egregious microtransactions is just pure corporate greed, and there's a good chance some of it is, but it's also a safeguard, like a necessity. And I think the solution is just to make games smaller, dude. Now, a really shitty byproduct of this risk-averse mentality is that a lot of these publishers are looking for a quick buck. They want to make easy money, so what do they do? Bingo! Flood the market with Aww. shitty remasters. Boy, there's been an abundance of these lately. The Last of Us 1 on PC, GTA Trilogy. Oh shit. Here we, we go, go again. Ah, oh, there it is. Hell, even Dark Souls Remastered sucked major ass. And don't even get me started on the fucking Battlefront collection. Did you know that at one point Warcraft 3 Reforged had like three people working on it? You mean Warcraft 3 Refunded? <laughs> Like one guy was supposed to remake all of the cutscenes. And this is so perplexing. These studios dump 10 figures into a new game, but can't even hire 10 people to make a decent remaster. It's it's like there's no middle ground. It's it's either no budget or uh, dump the bank account. Meanwhile, Lethal Company, made by one guy. Now, because is... studios are investing so much, they tend to interfere with the creative process to insane degrees. They see trends that are making money elsewhere and they think, well, let's just throw that into our game. I'm funding this. What I say goes. <laughs> Redfall lost 70% of its arcane staff during development, struggled the wow. whole way. Development of Redfall began in 2018 as parent ZeniMax was quietly looking to sell itself and was encouraging its studios to create games as a service projects like Overwatch. Yikes. Microtransactions were intensely encouraged. However, the problems in trying to develop Redfall surfaced early. Firstly, management kept offering conflicting visions of what the game would and should be, resulting in developer confusion about what they were creating. How to reconcile single player and multiplayer within an arcane- Should I put a brown diamond be like, actually, man, that one was so disappointing as a remake. I enjoyed my time playing it as a Pokemon fan itself, like for the nostalgia and shit. But as a remake, compared to what we had before as a remake, it's, it's a disappointment. In game was never what they were creating. How to reconcile single player and multiplayer within an arcane game was never really resolved either. Secondly, arcane employed fewer than 100 people, which had been enough to make a single player game, but was not a healthy number for developing a large multiplayer game with microtransactions to manage. Outsourcing work to other studios oh, was no. reportedly not enough to alleviate the strain. As a result of plummeting morale and lack of direction, veteran employees left the company in droves, with about 70% of the staff ultimately leaving Arcane. Redfall is not the only- Jesus Christ, man. Auras where and will remain the pinnacle of reimaginings, 100%. Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire 
were amazing remakes. Holy shit. It's not even a... Yeah, it's a remake. It's a remake. It's a reimagining in, in itself. It added more story. It added so much shit. It added... The mega evolutions, bro. It was amazing. Soul Silver and Heart Gold. Unfortunately, I did not play uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver because my DS got sold by my mom when that game came out. Yay! Story of its kind. You can look at most AAA flops or AAA games that severely disappointed, and you'll find something similar. Management interfered. Management wanted this. I imagine they feel they have to micromanage these things again because of the investment sometimes with triple a games it feels like there's too many cooks in the kitchen and gordon ramsay is pissed what are you <laughs> an idiot sandwich there's got to be a happy middle ground in dev team size too small and you feel like the world rests on your shoulders too big and you feel like you have zero agency and influence this leg? these big dev teams especially when they're spread out against multiple studios across the country can sometimes have very inefficient communities is there lag going? Are we lagging? That's my... Bitrate is fine. Communication. Bureaucracy. Next Battlefield has the largest development team so far. One year later, Check. former DICE Hi. dev says 2042 never stood much chance being great at launch. There's a video wow. by Timothy Kane, the creator of the original Fallout, no lag. about okay. game development caution. And he talks about how certain things in game development now that could be fixed in 45 minutes now take four weeks. When we were making The Outer Worlds, the combat AI wasn't really in yet. So I asked for a very simple combat yeah. aggression code. I remember AI. this. this. I remember this. Every time an NPC got shot, they would see if that person was on the list of someone. I remember this shot dude. Them. If they weren't, they'd add them to the list with the amount of damage they just took. If they were already on the list, they'd just add the amount of damage they took. Whenever they're deciding who to attack, they attack the person at the top of the list. That's it. That's all I wanted. The programmer who it got signed to came to me and said, I need four weeks. And I'm like, why? Walk me through what you're going to do. And he goes, you don't understand. You don't understand. Like, mm -hmm. I coded this three times. Walk me through it. And he wouldn't. He left. He left angry. Lead programmer came back, started yelling at me, saying, if he says he needs four weeks, he needs four weeks. And I'm like, then I will do it. I'll have it done before lunch. And he said, no, because then people will have to support your code. I'm like, I'm going to walk you through what I want. And you tell me why this takes four weeks. He looked at what I wrote, which was about 10 lines of pseudo code on a whiteboard. And he goes, I'll come back. He came back about an hour later and said, what about two weeks? And I said, do I have any what options the fuck? here? Fine. It's two weeks. You want to fix these lines of code? It literally sounds like the pro code programmers were incompetent those those programmers are probably the programmers that also work at riot man incredible fucking incredible i fucking can't oh that decision has to go through 10 fucking departments now it needs to be approved by your manager by your manager's manager it has to go through the marketing team the dei office and the fucking janitor's yeah. cousin yeah. has to approve it <laughs> indie developers don't have the same level oh, of bureaucracy Ari. i imagine if there's a problem with the code you could just walk over to the cubicle of jimbo and ask Legit. him about it without the fucking hr department breathing down your neck then you also have to make games that can be released in China. You need that China oh money. It has God. to hit certain quotas and scores on diversity, equity, and inclusion uh, to secure funding. And the game needs to have microtrans- I'm- I'm gonna say it. Not- Not all games need to have- To be inclusive. They just- It doesn't need to be there. I'm natural inclusive- Inclusivity. I can't say that word is fake it's bad like ugh. just stop it if it's natural it's natural we don't need a million different gay or trans characters in a game to make the game good if the person is gay or trans by itself that's absolutely fucking fine but we don't need a million different kinds of them like oh my god Ooh, inclusivity, inclusivity. I can't say the word. It adds nothing to the game. It doesn't. It absolutely does not. If the game is about a topic, sure. But I, me as a woman, I'm, I'm going to say this as well, right? Me as a woman, I never understood the notion 
of needing to be represented in a video game. I never understood it. Like, yes, I prefer playing female characters because I'm a woman, but I don't need to play a female character to feel represented. I don't need representation in a video game. It's unnecessary. I want to play a fucking game. If I want to kill someone in a game, I want to kill it. It doesn't, doesn't matter if I'm a woman or a guy or an animal or a monster. It doesn't. I just want to kill someone. Holy shit. Ugh. It's a political agenda, but if it's too much, they will only make people angry. Yeah. Is that a confession? A confession to what? A confession to what? It's been a long time since I ever felt like wanting to play a male character and I'm a dude. <laughs> I prefer to play female characters because I'm a man. Make a completely free character create and let people make the character they want. You don't... You don't need a crack to create it either. If the, the main character is a female, that's that. If the main character is a male, that's that. Tomb Raider has a female need. Horizon Zero Dawn has a female need. The Last of Us started off as a male lead. You occasionally played as Ellie. Amazing. They're, they're about their stories. Those games are about their stories. And people are trying to bring diversity into those games. I don't know why this fucking spray bottle isn't working. Like, I, I just don't understand. Um, the Last of Us already had signs, like with the DLC as well, right? They showed that Ellie is a lesbian, and that's completely fucking fine. It didn't feel forced, it felt it added to her story in the DLC, definitely. It did add to her story. But The Last of Us 2, The Last of Us 2 was such a massacre. How they have massacred one of my favorite games. Don't get me started on Abby. Don't get me fucking started on Abby. A lot of people ha had pointed out to me recently in, in the YouTube comments as well that, <laughs> that Abby, um, that explicit Abby scene, and I had completely erased that out of my memories. I had completely erased that out of my memories. I didn't even remember it existed because it was so bad to me. Holy shit. Oh my god. I could I could I could keep talking about The Last of Us 2. I could. I'm I'm so disappointed with how The Last of Us 2 went down. Despite how often they push women protagonists. When was the last game? Had a girl fly as a protagonist, Night in the Woods. Um, when you're saying a girl failure, do you mean like a girl failure, like in Butchie the Rock? That kind of girl fa uh, failure? I honestly don't know. What was it, Square Enix game that everyone hated with that female protagonist that literally uh, seemed to be defying the player? I forgot that one. Would that count as a good thing? I don't think so, right? No, 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 that wouldn't count. Oh my god, bro. I, I just... <sighs> Life of shit. <laughs> Technically, 2B not... Oh, no, 2B is not a girl failure. 2B is not a girl failure. 2, 2B is a girl boss, if anything. Most girl protagonists are Mary Sue's. 2B... Uh, then again, the 2B comment right after. 2B is not a Mary Sue. Um, Lara Croft isn't a Mary Sue. Um, Alloy isn't a Mary Sue. What other female protagonists do we have out here? I don't know. Let's continue with the video. Transactions for this consistent revenue source, a live service business model, so that makes the investors happy. And can you see how creativity dies in this environment when games are made by committee and not creativity? It also seems like the more employees a company has, the easier it is for you to blend in and not be seen or heard. Indie studios typically have better working conditions with flexible hours, 
employees have more creative control, smaller teams allow the individual to have more influence on a game and a greater impact. I've seen a lot of articles from ex-developers who say, this game wasn't what we intended to make. It wasn't what we envisioned. Fuck. Disagreements are gonna spring up in game development, but it's easier to settle an argument between two people than it is a hundred. At the end yeah. of the day, indie gaming has risen where AAA has fallen. The decline of AAA gaming is due to the insane budgets, scope, and expectations of these games. How that affects the employees, the work environment, the investors and higher-ups who have to constantly micromanage these games and throw in their own ideas when they have no fucking clue what makes a good video game. I feel like a lot of these developers simply don't have the same luxuries and freedom to create art like they used to. Game development in the AAA space is now a committee process where simple solutions to bugs can take weeks. Where the Toxic freedom guys. to express and create art and take risks is suppressed in favor of creating the generic and the safe. Too many external factors have disrupted what used to be a creative process with the singular goal of making the best and most fun video game possible. No one played Destiny 2 either. This shit has to make money and a lot of it. And it's for all these reasons that AAA gaming is declining and why indie titles are thriving. <laughs> but what do you think? What are some of your favorite indie games? Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Don't forget to join my public Discord server. Links in the pinned comment and the description. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did and subscribe to The Act Man for more awesome content. All right, everyone, that's all I got for today. This is The Act Man signing out. Good video. Good fucking video, man.